Hello, my name is Josh, uh, lead designer on the Privateer Board Game Project, and in this second video, this is tutorial number two, we are going to go through some first steps. And what we'll do is we'll provide you with three sample first turns of the game. So we're going to begin, going to begin with Doc Burgeon, our player one character. Now, uh, the first turn of the game, just like uh, other turns in the game, player one is responsible for operating the DUP. That's the dynamic use universe phase, and so since the tracker is on number one here, we're going to do what number one would do. Now, on the first stage of the DUP, non-player ships will hunt if possible, and in this case we don't have any non-player ships that are one jump away from somebody to hunt them, who would be hostile. Uh, the other thing that happens in the first stage of the DUP is the kill Rathi token moves around the Vortex of Doom one space. So you can see that in six turns, it's going to land up here, we're going to see a Kilrathi ship come out of the Vortex of Doom. So we're going to look at Doc Virgin. Doc Virgin is a bounty hunter. One of the things that Doc Virgin does then is he makes extra money collecting bounties, and he gets extra fame points for just collecting every two bounties, right? So the easiest place to find bounties is from pirates and Kilrathi ships, because they are all carrying bounties on their head that the military is glad to pay. He's over here on Milnos. Now, on your turn, you have an action that you can perform, or another action you can perform, or you can forfeit that action to increase the speed of your ship if you choose to move instead of making an action. So in this case, Doc, he has, uh, when forfeiting his action to move, Doc's speed is plus two. So if he forfeits his action, he can move really far. Uh, in this case, he doesn't have to go very far to get to some pirates, so what he wants to do, however, is he wants to make himself a little more outfitted to deal with pirates when he gets there. So what he's going to do is he's going to use his action to go to the shipyard. And while at the shipyard, you can purchase and sell as many items as you like for ships. So what he's going to do is he's got 10 credits, and he wants afterburners to increase his speed, helping him in combat. So that's 5 credits there. We're going to select our credits, and we're going to use the B button to decrease that number to five. The other thing he wants is he wants a couple of mass drivers. So they've cost five each, which would be ten credits. If he sells his two lasers, that only puts him to nine. He still can't afford them. So he's going to have to forego that for that for now. And uh, instead, what he's going to do is he's going to get some armor. So the armor upgrade comes in. That's another five credits. That puts him to none. So we'll push the end button. That gets rid of his credits. And because we've got the armor upgrade, that bumps him to armor 4. There we go. So that's his first action done. Gone to the shipyard. Now his second action, he's going to move. Now he's now speed 3, when he would normally be speed 4. So he's going to move off the planet to orbit. That's 1. He's going to go to Troy. 2. And then he's going to go his third space to New Trepid. Now, since he is hostile to pirates, at the start of the game, you begin... There we go. You begin neutral to pirates. However, if you move that token, you'll see there's still the, token, the marking here that shows you that pirates will attack you when you are neutral. So what happens when you move into orbit of a pirate hostile planet, or any other hostile planet, is you're going to roll to see if you have an encounter. So we're going to roll a d3, somewhere along here. Boom, he rolls a 2. So there's no encounter. If he had rolled a 1, you would have an encounter. This is the same way that the encounter gates work on your jump gates. If you are hostile to the Confed faction and you go through this jump gate, you may have an encounter if you roll a 1 on a d3. Now our second player, player 2, is Incipius Max. Now Incipius Max is a politician. One of the interesting things about in this game, I find, is that politicians are one of the most difficult characters to play as a solo game. But in multiplayer, they're vicious. The reason for that is you can see that they collect a fame point every time they successfully influence an enemy in combat. Fame points can be used as favors to move non-player ships or to make goods in demand and uh, or even convince somebody to leave you alone in combat. So not only does they, do they have the ability to influence people to leave them alone, but politicians can also move non-player ships to cause you to f end up in a fight that you may not want. So in this case, Insupius is going to decide to do some trading to get some money off the bat. He starts on Saigon. Let's see where Saigon is. Here, where they sell trade goods and purchase food. So he needs to find somebody that buys trade goods somewhere nearby. 
Now the easiest place to go would be probably Vex up there, since there's a pirate planet in the way down here. So what he's going to do is he's going to go use his first action to go to the commodities market. Opening that up, he's going to select trade goods. And since he has a cargo capacity of three, we're going to purchase three of those. One, two, three. We're going to show the number with the letter N and move it up with M, down with D. Now that cost him three credits because they're in ample supply on that planet. And with his second uh, action, he's going to move his full speed of two into orbit and to parry, which, because it is a military planet, he can't land on, but they won't attack him either because he's neutral. Now player three's turn will begin, and this is Jeff Kane. He is a mechanic, and he can repair his ship using an action or in combat instead of firing his weapons. If he repairs his ship three times, he gets a victory point. Mechanics don't have as easy access to fame points. They can get them through missions and other means. However, in this case, since he's a pretty tough cookie because he can repair his ship in combat, Jeff figures, I'm going to be a pirate. So with his first action, because his gun isn't very well, or his ship isn't very well outfitted, he's going to hire himself a wingman. This uses your action, and you do not have to pay him on that first turn. But we're going to go to our non-player ships, find the wingman card, and we're going to put that in his window, all along with a tracker, which we'll duplicate. Clone. Put it there. And we'll close the ship window. And with his second action, Jeff is going to move out into orbit. That's as far as he wants to move. Or is it? Well, here's the thing. If you go pirate up here in mid Ribbled Axis, the only way out is through a military planet. So it wouldn't be very smart to be a pirate and start scanning for neutral ships there. So he's going to use his second speed to move over here. Now, in the process, however, he's gone through one jump gate, and so he needs to pay his wingman two credits. Done. So he's in orbit of Rigel, and it is the end of that turn. Next, they would go to the second phase of the DUP. Now, some of these first turns, obviously, are done with the preparation of something to, specific in mind. For example, Doc is looking to hunt pirates, uh, Vesupius is on his way to Vex, and Jeff Kane is planning on picking fights with neutral uh, ships. That would be something they would do next turn. And we can cover all of those individual things in separate tutorial videos. But this gives you three starting steps. Some way to start the game with something specific in mind.